All right. All right, so what have you guys been up to? Yeah, am I on Zoom? Yep. Yeah. Sounds like your mic so got I, better. Yeah, it's better. <laughs> I did finish the immediate response thing and the Gita chat. That chat was also, like both of them are passing all the CS. And I'm waiting on your review on distributor of the to continue. Oh, shit. And I'll be working on, no, I still have some stuff left to do. Uh, the data flow and command, like I'll try okay. to finish that before next meeting. So I have something to do on the weekend. Okay. Um, but, let's see. You are I want you orchestrator. All right. Um, anything else? Uh, no. Like, I don't know. Do you have anything specific uh, about the data flow and comment? It should be just data flow and and the data flow. Right? No additional comments. Um. Let's see. Um, let's. Yeah, uh, this not, one. Uh, not this one. Uh, like uh, this one uses the other course and everything. So we discussed that day that we want just one day command to just run the data flow without any other course stuff. Oh, 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 oh. Are you, have you, have you, uh, let's see, let me see. Sorry. No, I haven't done that. I'll, I'll, I'll be doing that. So. Is that in this? Should I be looking in here right now? I guess I'm confused at where uh, No, I haven't added it anywhere. So I'm oh, okay. just, dis uh, like, just discussing. Like, uh, yeah, when we added it in the Gita chat board program, it had this, uh, like, log coming where we had to use records and everything. All right, great. Okay, now I see what you're saying. Sorry, we're just. Yeah. All right, I do. You did exactly what I asked for, which is list off what you wanted to talk about. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, okay, so Saksham, where are you, what are you? Uh, now I saw you. You added a bunch of those models. So that's great. Um, that's really really cool. Um, so let's see. Covenant models. Um, the only comment on actually, well, I had a few comments going on this one. Um, but let's see. Uh, but we'll we'll deal with that in a second. Um, so cove net uh, by Okay, what else? Uh yes, so I have also added uh, another PR for like the get single one. You've reviewed it once. I uh, pushed the change for it. So when that gets merged, then I'll uh, update the flower classification example, and then that will be done too. And I'm kind of working around getting a, a good data set for faces so that we can use OpenCV's uh, cascade mm. classifiers to get only the fa facial area and then use uh, the uh, new models on them for tasks like gender classification or uh, classification stuff all right um i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna say we should stay away from faces here and i'll explain that later um okay so is that uh, because of like the like we have to basically I have to go stand in front of an ethics review board if we do anything like that. Okay. okay. <laughs> and I'm, I've, got, I've got enough stuff that I have to do, so unfortunately. But I, I mean, I encourage you, if you want to do that at some point, to, to throw up, you know, another repo, um, like, under your own GitHub and, and show how you could do that. That would, I mean, that's that would be great, right? Okay, um, yeah, I can do that. Yeah, and so... And I'll just look for another example. For yeah, me. yeah, exactly, right? So I, I would encourage you to do whatever you want um, there on on your own, on, on, you know, a repo that's under your GitHub name. Um, but yeah, I have to, 
I have. I will have to stand in front of an ethics review board for anything that. like that. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking about doing that, just making my own report to use DFML for examples. Cool. Yeah. And we can maybe add e images to my report. Yeah, exactly. So you could sort of, you know, demo whatever you wanted, you know, sans sans Intel ethics review board and and red tape. Um, so yeah. Um, but yeah, for the scope of for. For the scope of GSOC, we'll we'll want to we'll want to keep everything, um, you know, as, yeah, as 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 uh, inanimate object as possible, right? <laughs> okay. okay. But good 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 thinking. Um, let's see, it's because that that people do like to see that stuff. Um, okay. So PyTorch needs review, get single PR needs review, um, and then basically you're saying you're looking for you know other OpenCV related examples. Yeah, I'm looking for a good example that would be uh, that would make the FFML more like catchy and catchy, and be, people may use it more. Mm -hmm. We got for some reason I noticed we got a real jump the other day when we did the meeting. We had a we had a we had we lost one star, and within since Tuesday we've gained eight stars. So I don't know what the hell is going on, but we'll see. Um, we're about to do that release. I just I finally got the compliance task is is all the compliance tasks are being double checked today for the main repo and then um, We'll see I got to get the other plugin stuff still done, but we're closing in there um, So let's see looking for good examples related to fission and then Himanshu How's it going with you? Uh, yeah, so I'm working on the uh, specific models, mm -hmm. and I added a PR, and I wanted a suggestion there. Okay. And also, if anyone has any suggestions for uh, adding example for an LP operations, then uh, it will be great because I'm searching for examples specifically. So if anyone has any idea, something cool they want, uh, so I can uh, maybe I can try to integrate that. Okay, cool. Nice. And this sort of this is this actually brings up something well we'll talk about it later, but um Gash, you got anything you want to talk about this week? No, nothing so far. All right, cool. Um, let's see. All right, so um, knock off this bullet point here. All right, so first off, I wanted to cover. Um, oh, well, I'll do it at the end of these. Um, okay, what did I want to say? Um, let's see. Oh yeah. Okay. So basically, we don't really have um, something. I think the should I is failing on npm audit. Um, we don't have a good way for um, well, our issue space is a bit crowded, and we don't really have a good way for uh, you know this type of discussion like we're doing, where we're we're soliciting. We 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 want to find get some feedback from each other on various things um, like you know hey looking for examples related to vision or, or NLP um, so I was wondering um, I was wondering if anybody has any ideas on like it sounds if that seems something like I know github had some kind of discussion feature but I haven't seen where the hell that is um, I thought there were some suppose they were supposed to be implementing some kind of discussions thing um, but I haven't I don't know where that is. Um, so I was wondering if you guys have any, it seems like there might be some kind of like platform or something kind of like we use Gitter that might be good for that type of thing where, where or well, maybe it, I mean, maybe it just ends up being we have issues that are pinned, but you know, there's just so many issues, right? That, I don't know, maybe we just need to create issues and then I, I have that community input needed label that we can add to them. Um, that might be a better way, but I don't know. What do you guys think? Because I feel like we have sort of a lack of ability to, um, you know, uh, ask. Like, there's not a great way for us to ask each other for uh, to for for idea feedback in general, other than sort of the Gitter chat and 
that ends up being kind of hard to follow sometimes. Does anybody have any thoughts on this or think everything is good as is or any suggestions for ways we might want to do this? I know you guys may have seen various various tools or things or do you even feel like this is a problem? Maybe you don't feel like it's a problem. Yeah, I haven't been really affected. What? Most of the time we discussed up in the meetings. So That's I true. Really that. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. Okay. Then, then, yeah. That's true. We do have the meetings, I guess. Unless we get a bunch more people, then it won't get out of hand. So, all right. Cool. We'll just if call you want, it. We can change to a more defined client. To, like, we are using data. We can use something else. Yeah. Something like. Uh, Something yeah. like Zulip, we can use That's that. what I was thinking, yeah. yeah there I have some people using Zulip and Slack a lot. Yeah, I've, I've seen this one. Seems to, That's the one with multiple sub-channels and things. That looks like it might be kind of cool. Um, yeah, it's like a midway between IS and, uh, yeah. and Slack. Yeah, I, I personally like... I've played around with Slack, and they definitely have nice bot integrations. But it, like, I've noticed it basically just ends up becoming giant spam all the time of various bots saying things. Um, yeah. And that's, that's that's basically makes it unusable as far as I'm concerned. I haven't used Zulip, but uh, I have uh, I have my friends who have complained that it has very bad interface. I don't know. Okay. Like it's a bit messy. I don't. Know. The yeah. interface actually last year. They we just now revamped their UI. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. Last year it was like really terrible, but just it has been revamped now. And it also has a terminal client I contribute. Oh wow! All right. Okay, that's guy. You've sold me already. Um. All right. Okay. Yeah. Sold. Um. I'm gonna be looking into that. So let's see. Um. All right. Okay. So let's just run through these guys. So um, first of all, let's check out and and you guys have probably noticed this, but unless you're pinging me specifically um, for PRs where the CI is in passing, I'm not. I'm not. I haven't. I'm not looking at them because I've just been way too overloaded. Um, so basically, if if the if you need input on a PR that the CI is not passing, make sure you ping me in, in Gitter until I'm until I look at it because I'm I'm. Uh, I've got I've got a, just like just way overloaded right now. So, um, so let's see. Great, this looks great. Sweet. All right. Um, and then is the tutorial up to date or we're let's see. Oh yeah. Different PR. Tutorial. The tutorial that needs to use immediate response. Oh no, I update that in another PR. Okay. All right. Great. So let's make a note of that. I did add the docs for this one. All right. But, yes, uh, I saw that. Great. Step up and okay, so that's for immediate response. Um, da, 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 da. That looks good. All right, let's merge it. Oh, nice. Yeah. Six five seven. Right. Great. Done. Merged. All right, and then we need to make a note. We're gonna do uh, merged. Um, we'll update uh, tutorial in another PR. So I'm going to make a, let's make an issue for that. Um, let's see, which requests are, yeah, um, usage or data flow, uh, deployment, what, what is it called? It, it was FFmpeg. FFmpeg. Uh, no, the auto, uh, FFmpeg auto deployment. Uh, all right, yeah. Um, well, I'm just talking about like what's the docs usage. 
data flows. Right, I believe it's docs usage. Is it a data flows? I uh, think it's no. an examples usage. Usage webhook. Oh, usage webhook index. Oh, yeah. Okay, so usage webhook deploy. It's under webhook. That's why. Okay. So, yeah, it's somewhere under here. So, usage webhook. Um, usage webhook um, updates to use immediate response. Okay, and I'm going to put this one on the uh, 3.8 release here. Um, since we got that in, we might as well have it. Because um, that'll make yeah, it I'll a little bit more Sweet. Awesome. Great. Um, okay. Uh, okay, so chatbot done. Yeah, we merged master. Great. Wait a minute, what the hell? Or wait. Oh, damn it. Alright, okay. Sorry, you're gonna have to update change like again. Um I okay. have done resolve conflicts before, but then I've also hit resolve conflicts and it then immediately merged the result into the master branch, which is why yeah, I haven't seen me do that. Um and then it merges them all with all the commits, which is why I avoid doing that. Um so to update change log then we'll merge okay um, so then need review on distributed orchestrator um, so that is you need you do want me to review that PR then uh, yes yeah okay because like it's already at a checkpoint and if okay. we are changing something it's better to change it to everything Great. Okay. Yeah, I was watching that issue that you created. Sort of um, slowly tick things off here. Um, yeah. So. I haven't added the list though. Was that okay. Oh, so this is milestone one, thing. milestone two. Great. Yeah. All right. And you got it. Did you get it spinning up and down? Yeah. Yes. Great. Awesome. Okay. Right, so. Yeah, I have added the list for that list. So, okay, data flow run command without records. All right, so what did you want to talk about here? Do you have any like, sort of. Um, like if you can just give us a CLI example, that we. You know. Okay, so yeah, I mean, let's let's take a look at what we've got right now, and that will probably help us help us figure out. Yeah, it's the best way to there's do. There's one this. in the chat board already. Yeah, and actually the. Good, I think. Uh, well, I think we have one in here too, so we'll just check this out. Okay, so and actually we need to get rid of some of that. But all right, so right now we have. I'm kind of wondering here if um, we want to just take um, take the existing commands and turn it into just data flow run and basically say if you specify sources then we're going to do it that way uh, the way we have otherwise we're okay, going to so do we it. Enforce, we want to enforce the other ones uh, basically should we throw a warning or something thank you um, should we what? Should we throw a warning or something? Because currently, like, if we miss records or something else, like, it will throw an error. Yeah. Well, I'm just thinking sort of like, okay, so let's just play with some syntax here. Right. So, um, where's this? And we need to update this damn command. That's another thing. Um, 
Oops. So let's, yeah, because well, let's just see sort of like how it makes sense, you know. Um, all right. So we essentially, right now, the way that we do it is basically we usually use like if we're running just one off things, we use the memory source like that, right? So we need a way to say, um, right, we need a way to say basically like what's the context and then what's the uh like you know we need a way to say what's the context and then what are the values for that context right um so let's see um can't remember well this one doesn't do any git single or anything um yeah, and it's gonna output records, right? So we need a we need we need something that would just be like data flow run, um, and then so source records, right? The inputs we have the inputs to add for each context, right? And basically our record keys here. So world and user become our contexts. And then we have our inputs for each context. And then we say, also, I want to define the context as this, um, you know, this definition, which is value in this case. Um, so we, we, we need, we need a way to do the same thing. We also should, should probably have a way to do, you know, a random context where you're just adding things in each context, right? Um, so, you know, let's see, like, for example, um, hmm. yeah, I guess, yes, uh, syntax is always tricky. How do you make something that makes sense? Um, we could just do something like this, where context def value, so, and then followed by the context keys. Um, yeah, I don't know. This this could be. I mean, this essentially replicates it. Does this seem like it might make sense, or? Uh, what does context do in Excel? Well, that would be the definition that you want to also assign to the the value of the context, right? So in this case, we're running each context. The context would be world and my username, and and so and. Um, and then we we pass we create these we also pass these inputs into it okay. right so um so for each content we create a context we create two contexts right one for world and one for user and then we put two inputs into it we put one input that's going to be hello with with the definition of key the value is hello the definition is key and then we do this other one where we do um you know where we say okay the context we created, so world in the first case, that should be, we should use that value and we should, we could create an input object and the value is world and the definition is value, which is why this is confusing because we're look, talking about these key value mappings. Um, yeah, that was confusing. Yeah, so this is, this is obviously a, uh, this is, this is not the best example from a, uh, from a phrasing perspective here. Um, but, Let's. You see what I mean, though, right? Yes. Sir. Yeah. All right. Um, so, let's see. And I think maybe we could even we could probably simplify this more. We could just say, you know, um, print output. Uh, if we do print output, just to make this more clear for the recording, whatever. Oops. Um, then we would do data to print no echo oops oh yeah and I fucked up all the syntax but basically you know it would look like it would look like this right so if you just wanted to print these two things to the screen you would do that um, so I don't know. I mean, I think that the the other thing is that um, 
now we've 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 got we've got the data flow run command and it has records as a subcommand and I can't remember what the hell happens to arg parse when you do this uh, when you have subcommands but then also want to run it as a command itself um, so we should check that out um, and what I mean by that is right if we have data flow run um, and we have let's see yeah, we have run all records, and we have run um, the set of records, and then we basically have, you know, the, you know, run records here, and then run here, so I don't know what happens if we do this. I can't remember if this works or not. Isaac def run soft. I think that when you have subcommands under a command, it just doesn't let you run the command itself. It only lets you run subcommands um, when you register it with argparse. Let's try. Oh no, it does work. Cool. All right, so yeah, I guess the problem is okay. Positional arguments, right? So uh, let's just try this real quick to make sure that this works. <laughs> um, trying to do like it, it really wants you to choose a subcommand if you register a subcommand there um, so I'm wondering if this is what I'm thinking is is I think we probably need to turn um, like records or maybe look for the presence of uh, sources let's see let's see what is sources so sources and it looks like, yes, it's required, or no, it's not required because it's got a default. So basically, oh yeah, see, and that's going to be wacky. I don't think we really want a default here in this case for the run command. Um, so, um, or like we want it to be empty, you know. So we'd probably just look for run command config. Uh, we'd look for the presence of that. And then we'd look for the presence of like, um, let's see, with, where is it? So basically put it all into the data flow. We're gonna need to modify all the data flow run commands. And we're gonna basically say, okay, if there are any sources that are given, you're gonna run, you know, all of it. Otherwise you need to run, um, you go yet so otherwise you run only so yeah if there if you see any sources then you run the existing basically use the existing code right if you don't see any sources given then um you use this new syntax basically which is like a simplification where we just i mean you can reuse the existing code and create a memory uh, you know source behind the scenes and do the same stuff behind the scenes right um can we add context as a subcommand context as a subcommand yes, yeah you mean uh, like with the quotes like i don't know if that works just like dffml data flow run context yeah yeah, that could work. I mean, and that like would, give, give, give them a default value, give the context a default value, like some random generator string. Yeah, well, I mean, the, so you're going to get randomly generated contexts um, if you don't specify them, right? But the, then the key is yeah. like, okay, well, how do you how do you specify how many you want, oh, oh, right, okay. and things okay. like that, right? So you might you might have one where you do. Yeah, I mean, what you could do here is you could create that. It's, that's actually so 
running on that line of line of thinking. So, um, um, context you could do run context, or you could do single um, single, and then for run single you could just do. Um, basically, let's see, what does it end up being? Um, uh, it's like, you know, I think for run and then to data flow, and then yeah, I think you can just pass the array of input values. And then, yeah, I think it's, it's yeah. and then you just, you know, call it good with one, right, you know, return whatever the output is. Uh, I think that probably ends up being your run single, and then your run context is that same syntax that we just used um, here, this type of thing. Um, oops, yeah, so... Yeah, run context, right? That I think, yeah, there you go. That that gives you a much cleaner implementation here. Yes, um, yeah. And then when you do run context, you can reuse a lot of the code that you already have. I mean, you're going to end up reusing a lot of this code. But all right, cool. So that gives you a path forward then. Yeah, sure. All right, great. Cool. Yeah, good, good ideas. Um, good, good, good plan making this into a new uh, a new command here because yeah, it's definitely getting tedious typing records and all the sources and stuff. So yeah. Um, so see. And like sometimes expect results. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, all right, PyTorch models need review. I'm in the process of reviewing that. I have it open. Um, uh, regarding the this pull request, there, uh, if you have seen, if you have already seen or not, there is a uh, we are using loss function and optimizer, which are predefined here. So I was uh, maybe like I wanted to ask, like, how can we make them uh, accessible through CLI? Where are they? Let's see. It, it's in base, I think. The div's not loaded. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. In the A inter uh, function. A inter. Just below this. Cross entropy loss, this type of thing. Yeah, these three things, like, if okay. we can make them. Yeah, you want to make these. Accessible. Yeah. All right. So let's see. Um, I think this is going to be another sort of case where we do something kind of like we did with the NumPy, NumPy config and the, the TensorFlow config. Yeah, I was config. thinking that we can use make NumPy config to get all the. Yeah. Uh, if they are documented. Better. Yeah, exactly. If they're documented with that, then we can do that pretty easily. Um, and then we'll just need to do like an enumeration. I, th I feel like we just talked about this last week too, um, where we need to, I th oh yeah, with regard to layering, um, we'll need to do an enumeration of all the possible options and then register as them, them as entry points. Um, because that way, you know, the reason why we're doing this is because from like a security perspective, we only want to have a defined set of things that we're allowing people to instantiate and, and a defined set of, you know, a predefined set of what their parameters are going to be. Um, Cause or else you can get into a space uh, very quickly where all of a sudden you're, you're giving, you're, you're giving people too much control over what code gets instantiated. Um, so uh, that's, that's why we're doing it this way. Um, so, yeah, let's definitely check out. Um, let's check out the use of. So let me just make a note here. So, um, uh, well, let's see. Where's the best place to make a note of this? Yeah, mm, right now. I don't know if it's critical right now um, to get these stuff merged. Right, you need. You want to get this merged before the next release here. So, um, I mean, we'll get it merged and then you can jump back on it and, and try to make it customizable. Um, 
we'll, we yeah, have open issues. Bring it so. to your attention, like yeah. the, if this can be done. We'll follow. And this actually is a good, this is a good thing. So to make a docs uh, thing about, um, so we should make a, we should make a tutorial on how to do this. So, um, docs, um, attributing, um, how to make a new, do we have a document on this? No, I don't think we do. Do you guys remember? Attributing. Yeah, I don't think we do. This is, well, like we said, this is like so not good organization wise. Um, okay. Um, make a new entry point. Um, um, example. This will be helpful to those uh, adding support for custom layers. All right, great. Um, so then I'll say we'll follow the pattern. Or Or do I just call that? Uh, how to make entry point loadable object? Once it's complete, um, to make these customizable. All right. Um, okay. And then let's see. Um, uh, all right. Entry points is a word, damn it. Uh, it is now. All right. Okay. Git single PR needs review. Um, okay. And the Gitter one. Okay. We just wanted. We just did you uh, do the change log? Okay. Yeah. I okay. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Push that, and then we can merge it. Um, okay. So, and then obviously I've got a review in progress here, so I'll give you that shortly. That's what I was doing before this meeting. Okay, so looking for good examples related to vision. Um, so does anybody have any um, any anything where we can stay away from humans, basically? Because um, that brings us into all sorts of uh, all sorts of things. Um, so I mean, anybody see? We have object recognition model, so like, is, are we looking for CV models or? Be uh, I'm, look, I'm looking for an example that can maybe use both of them or one of them. That doesn't matter. Like, uh, how does object detection sound? Uh, or maybe background segmentation, image segmentation. So, so regarding that, we like I also wanted to talk. Like we don't have like we have like uh, dffml list records to list the records uh, we don't support showing images uh, that are edited uh, using operations yeah so okay so yeah but for okay but you i mean you would essentially want to just be creating bounding boxes here um and then we would export that to something, and then we, I mean, we would worry about the problem of showing images later, right? So if you're doing object detection, you, you might want to do, you know, creating bounding boxes and then storing bounding boxes as feature data, right? Or as you know, prediction yeah. data, right? Yeah. And then you could, you could, you know, your program of choice, you can, you can write something else to to take that and put the bounding boxes, right? That could be like a. Um, 
that I mean, we could we could have another set of we could basically have an operation that goes and draws bounding boxes, right? Um, if you wanted to. Um, uh, yes. And then creates another feature. You know, you could do that with the data flow preprocessing stores or something. Um, actually, which brings up a good point that we should we should make it so that the the preprocessing source has access to the prediction data as well. Because, well, let's see. In this case, in this case, we do a prediction, right? And then we end up with, well, let's see. Um, yeah, I guess we're looking at model predict. I mean, you would want to just make a data flow where you're doing the preprocessing and you do the predict within the data flow. Um, and then you end up, yeah, this would probably be a case where you would run like the edit command and you give the edit command a data flow where it does the prediction, creates the bounding boxes, and then uses an operation that looks at the bounding boxes. And like it does a prediction, assigns the feature data, and or basically just the output of model predict goes into this bounding box function. And then you know you add you, now one of your feature data is this this bounding image with bounding box or something or maybe or i guess in this case we probably need the ability for the, the the output of the data flow to be assigned to prediction data or something um i don't know thoughts on that does that yeah I'll, I'll take a look at it and see if there's something comes up okay the other thing that that, that comes to mind is that that very basic example and it's an extension of the very basic example that you see in scikit where they do the coins um the image with the coins um and well i don't know if there's going to be there's probably not a data set for this but um well you might be able to just basically scrape images from the web i don't know what the well i don't know what they that's probably a dubious uh dubious licensing issues there but you could do something where you segment the image, right? Like the, the thought here being you use some of the more the more classical OpenCV methods to segment the image into, you know, possible objects. And well, I guess that's just object detection. But beyond that, like the idea there was, you know, what are the values of all the coins in this image and sum it up or something, right? Um, like what what is like what are all the numbers on this image? You could take maybe MNIST and and like take a picture of a bunch of dollar bills or something and and try to you know draw draw rectangles use open cv to to grab rectangles and then look within the rectangles for numbers and then sum up all the numbers and you know tell someone how much money they have right okay i don't know yeah, that sounds like a good idea i'll okay. take a look at and see if i can find more good examples cool i'll let yeah. you know yeah i i i have one suggestion if if you want to do something with the face but not actually want this uh, you can try to detect the blinks uh, i think that will not be a problem because that will not involve face yeah there you uh, go so I do, yeah so i don't know because that will be cool if you can i don't know if it's possible because we can have a live demo kind of thing we can run it and then a person will detect a blink and then it will detect that you blink the eye then we can count in uh, how many minutes you can uh, you are blinking or we can, we can have many use cases like you are always watching the screen and whether you are blinking or not so these kind of things so that is uh, one thing we can do if, uh, yeah cool blink. Yeah, I've thought of these uh, functions and operations, but I was like thinking like maybe here in the FFML, we wanted like stuff related that is related to machine learning. Yeah, this will also be the machine learning uh, because we we'll have to first uh, figure out the eye from the face that will use the face features that will have to learn using model. And then you have to uh, detect whether the eye is getting closed or not. That is again going to be machine learning. That will be totally based on ML models only. I guess yeah, you uh, do model. need the data set there, right? So I mean, you will have just... pretend models also. Uh, yeah, so yeah there are pretend hard like features that detects eyes yeah. using the cascading classifiers in OpenCV. Yeah, yeah. So in, in OpenCV, it's possible to do this thing. So, or uh, if you want a classical example, then you have uh, tumor cells. Uh, I mean, you can go to biology side, and then you have so many. Uh, cells yeah. classification, brain cells classification, and uh, when do the 19 chess set, it's really popular. 
then I guess it's open. Hello? Um, let's see, what did you say, Yash? Uh, there's this coronavirus test x-ray data set. That's a simple application of CNNs. There you go, yeah, and do definitely that, that's, yeah. that's... That would be a good, a good thing to do. Um, the, I'm thinking, thinking more about blinking. Um, and I'm remembering that my coworker Terry was complaining that the machine learning models, um, like sometimes don't detect when people like some people just like naturally have their eyes closed more and then machine learning models, data sets are not trained on that. And, uh, she had seen some research that was, uh, that 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 wrecked havoc with um so that may also be something that we want to stay away with from i think i think pr pretty much in general let's just stay away from anything with 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 people um as i know as bland as that might sound but i i uh it, it will it will uh, help us avoid hot water that's for sure um so i'm sorry to be sort of the uh the uh I'm sorry to be a um, uh, uh, a bummer on that, but yeah, I think I think we might want to unless unless you you've made sure you've done like a bunch of like thorough examination of the data set and made sure like you've got like very distributed demographics and everything, um, then yeah, then let's stay away from that. Okay. Um, so where, what, is there more information about this COVID data set, Yash? This is available on Kaggle and all the data sources are mentioned there. And I guess most of them are like openly public data sets. Yeah. Okay. Um, the other thing is, I mean, obviously Saksham's work is focused around images mostly. So the, I mean, is this something that we could still... I mean, this, this, I assume you know you're you're getting a giant matrix here, right? So, can we still use the the and the image operations essentially operate on on large matrices, right? So, so is this something that we can still apply those pre-processing techniques to? Because his goal is to show you know the use of the you know maybe some scikit image operations and and scikit pre-processing stuff, um, and then feed it through. A, Feed it through it, uh, some kind of machine learning model, right? Right, Saksham. Oh uh, yes. I mean, I'm I'm not sure if those are going to be if those are going to map like you know if if because we could we could just right people have done this before where they basically take you know matrix like data and then you know use right like that's that's what you're saying here is like a, a lot of people that's like you know, a lot of what people have been doing with CNNs and then they map them into other fields, right? So maybe we can apply the same techniques to this data. Do you think that would be, um, like, I guess I haven't seen this, right? So Yash, um, do you think that sounds like something that might work here or? So you're saying like uh, using CNNs for some kind, some other kind of data or particular? Well, I think you, you so you, let, let, let's just let's let me bring this up so that we're all on the same page here. So, um, this way, this way we're not guessing at things. Um, so let's see. Um, Okay, yeah, let's check out what kind of data do we have here. Um, go away, go away. Um, okay. What is this? This is the same thing. Um... All right, okay, I should probably read what the hell it says. Um, requesting a collaborative effort of the AI community to fight COVID-19 
blah, 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 blah. This is what I know. Like this it's is all I know. Alright, okay, well, this is... I'm just looking for the link, I'll just send it. Okay, great. Well... Yeah, right. I had one of my friends who well, was in there, you know, like, of this collection, I think I have it somewhere. Yeah, okay, so if we could all maybe send, send if anybody has some stuff, maybe send it to the Gitter channel. Um, so send info to Gitter channel uh, ping suck sham. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's try to come up with one more idea here. I mean, <laughs> now, now seeing this this NLP related data set, you know, maybe we've also solved Himachu's problem. Um, <laughs> I just sent the link to the uh, data set. All right, great. That's and cool. for images, like most CNN networks work for images. They are like the direct applications of image class. Oh, great. Yeah. Okay. So this is exactly what we want then. I triple E. All right. Hey, here we go. This is great. Yeah, this is perfect. I mean, I think this seems perfect to me. What do you think, Sasham? Is or does this look good? Yeah, it looks great. All right. Sweet. Yeah, There's let's roll with this. Popular data set, the Lego brick data set, I guess. Oh Most yeah. People start with it for like, the classification problem. Okay. And. Then we can move, like, we can probably move on to more, more difficult architectures, but we'll have to just figure out how to integrate neural networks properly with DFFML. Yeah, look at the Lego brick example. So the thing is that uh, these data sets just use the CNN that I've added. Uh, and I was uh, more of looking for like new uh, features that can be added to DFFML and not just just using CNN and CNN and be done with it. Well, so I mean, I thought your your thing was going to be that you're going to take the um, you're going to take the image preprocessing operations like you've done. Let, like, let's check out your tutorial here. Um, Oh wait, we merged it. Uh, no, it's not merged yet. It's not merged. Oh, it's just went. Or wait, damn it. Where did it go? Yeah, there it is. Seven seven oh, seven. Yes, there we go. Oh yes, okay. Oh, it's just a. I ran through it, so okay. Um. So yeah, I mean the 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 point here is that you're you're taking, I mean you're you're running these pre-processing operations. So we can just run these pre-processing operations on. I mean you're looking for you're you're hoping to find a data set that you get good accuracy. What do I guess what what is your goal here? Like I we have this example. You've shown how to do pre-processing operations. You've shown you've got that you'll add the CNN. You're looking for now another application to do the same sort of demo just is that what the goal is yeah i'm looking for a new example that will like i cannot uh, i thought of adding all the open cvns sk image functions but that would be very redundant yeah. because not all of them are used in machine learning yeah so i'm yeah. looking for examples that uh, can that we can use to preprocess data mm -hmm. uh, using new operations so that there are some new operations besides these that I've added. Okay. So you you're looking for examples that require data preprocessing, and then you're going to uh, write specific show how to write specific preprocessors for that. Uh, yes. Okay. Um, hmm. Okay. It doesn't. So it doesn't necessarily have to be related. I mean, yeah, the thing is, okay, so, yeah, I mean, you've also got, what you could also do here is you could, you know, chain to, um, let's see, I mean, okay, okay, the goal, okay, 
tell tell me your goal again so basically what i <clears throat> so basically what i meant that what, uh, with that was that i was looking for uh, more examples that use uh, image pre processing uh, so that we can pre, uh, so that i can add more operations uh, using open cv and sk image and then we can feed it to the, uh, pre feed the pre processed data to the model okay okay and this is why of like, course the uh, facial detection thing came up because OpenCV has a bunch of facial detection stuff in it. Yeah, the Lego okay. bricks example just uses a CNN, and we can just classify the stuff. Okay. And well, there are many such data sets that just use CNN, and uh, they classify with a good accuracy. So well, I was just looking for more than that. So what if we just don't use, I mean, have you tried, I mean, the Lego brick example, like, what is it classifying the different kinds of bricks? Is that what it's trying to do? Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. Um, I mean, can you use some of the like the edge detection stuff, and then color detection to classify? You know, I mean, is it all Lego bricks, or is there some things that aren't Lego bricks? I think that I think it's all Lego bricks. I haven't looked at it in a okay. long time. Okay. Um. I mean, I mean, I would I would say you could try using some of the it, it seems to me that you would want to pull do the same stuff that you've kind of done with this this feature extraction here right where but with Lego bricks you're looking for how many circles are on the top right and how many edges are there and then you know like curvature for some pieces pieces right and so you have the I mean there's the edge detection stuff and there's what else is there in there but I'm wondering you know could you just do that like you tried this with scikit before you're going to add the cnn and would you get okay accuracy right that's what i'm that's what my thoughts are on this do you do you um do you know of item because i haven't looked at the set of things in open cv in a long time so do you do you know if there's anything else in there that that might be good for this type of, you know, like this, the same same thing, right? Yeah, Where... there, are there are more functions like uh, edge detection, like you just said, and uh, you, you transform and hog detector, hog descriptors, and there are many of such feature descriptors in OpenCV. Yeah, so I mean, maybe I mean, it sounds to me, to me, I would say your first, first first shot here would just be do exactly what you did with the flower data set with scikit and and you know run a few of those on it right and use those as your feature vectors right yeah i mean i don't know i could be off base here what does everybody else think you may not get good accuracy but you know like so don do you remember like we had the idea of integrating label studio Right. Yes. That's yeah. Stuff. So these open CV and scikit image libraries are mostly used for that stuff. Like yeah. They just detect the edges through some algorithms and they just mark it off and it is useful to label data and then you just run it through the models like mm -hmm. CNN and stuff and then you use some data that doesn't like you ultimately don't need the algorithms anymore. You just use the neural. Network. Yeah. You just use the neural network. Yeah. So, okay. I guess the better idea would be like to not focus more on these operations, rather focus on focus on uh, getting a better support support for neural networks and DFS yeah. so that we could build some complex architecture simply and then yeah. use those operations later. Exactly. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think. I think you're on the right track here, right? Because because we're we're caught up. We're definitely caught up in this idea of, of what open CV things can we use when you know a large part of this is is the data flows will allow us to to chain the different neural networks together, right? That's what you're saying. Uh, I'm 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 like I I would suggest. Like I'm, I don't know like whether you would be comfortable or Saksham would be comfortable, but I'll say that we shouldn't focus much on these operations for now yeah. because we don't have many applications in DFFML integrated yet. Mm, so okay. I'll suggest like if Saksham could focus on focus more on integrating neural network properly, 
and I can that would be help in higher that. value. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, let's shift focus to that then, because um, I think you're right. I think you know, there's right. There's there's obviously so much you can do with these, and and definitely having proper support for the for layer configuration is big. Um, so I'll try to get. I guess my let me. Well, my schedule's pretty packed today. What is it? Um, if the, yeah, because we basically we need we need all all of these right. This the tutorial for this is the same as the tutorial for 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 the layers. Um, so um, so I'll I'll get on that ASAP, um, and uh, I'll, I'll make that my top priority right now. Um, because all right, and and then we'll we'll look at we'll look at expanding the um the support there. So um, let's so. Let's, okay. Uh, let's get the flower data example merged, um, then focus um, on um, layer support. Um, so, Yash will work with Saksham on this. Uh, John will uh, create a guide, and I'll probably end up doing the, the converting the TensorFlow Hub ones or whatever the one, whatever the one that exists right now. I'll probably end up doing that as part of the examples, so that there's a concrete example there. So, create guide. Um, to show how to get uh, to uh, make layers into true point plugins. All right, so I'll make that my top priority then. Okay, so sweet. Um, anything else? Let's see. Uh, we'll do, let's see. Um, I'm, I'm going to, I'll do the get, the get single PR once we're done with this, um, meeting and then I'll do that. So let's okay. see, well, I'll do all the reviews and then I'll do, I got, I got a few more meetings back to back, but, uh, this afternoon, basically I'll get to it. Um, so let's see. Um, yeah, uh, John, I have to chat about like some test of oh, you updated that. That's what All right. Um, why is this failing? Like, one of the guys, the Transformers installation. Oh, fuck. Is Transformers work. updated again? Why do they... Wait, what happened here? Who failed to install Transformers? What is it on about? Is this? Did this just happen? This happened in one of my PRs for TensorFlow 2. It's just like doesn't like installing it? Yeah, sometimes it fails. Oh, the SHA failed? Are you kidding me? Weird. That is really... I have kind of weird. a similar error in the get single uh, pull request. Okay, alright, well... I like, the same error for another installation also. That's irrelevant, so... Um, operations image. Let's just see. I mean, there's probably network errors on GitHub's end. I mean, that's God damn it! I keep thinking we need to cut out the goddamn logging on the memory source because this is ridiculous. Um, okay, let's just. I'll just merge this in a second. All right. So, I'm not sure you're working on the spacey models. Um, uh, let's see. Yeah, I have a PR. I needed, uh, I needed a few suggestions there, if you can open that. Okay. okay look, model. Yeah, in operations, if you can go at the end. The bottom. Yeah, this uh, count vectorizer and TF-IDF vectorizer. So this is from scikit-learn. Uh -huh. So the uh, thing here is we have so many functions. Uh, once we create the vectorizer, we can instantiate so many functions. So do we want to expose all of them or uh, we just want to use the most used one? Because uh, the one that I'm using is, uh, if you can scroll down a bit. 
vectorizer dot fit transform that is what we use to convert the text to the numbers the mm -hmm. vectors yeah and, but we have other functions too so do we want to expose them or uh, this should be enough well i mean you're um i'm i'm you're you're the one who knows the most about nlp here so that's that's your that's your call I mean, we can always refactor this later, right? To do other things. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, this is the most uh, commonly used because this is what, you, what people use it for. They just want to convert it to numbers. Yeah. So let's see. Um, that's what the me what methods do we have here? Yeah. Um, so these are the methods. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, I would say let's see, and then these have different doc. It, or these have different um, these have different methods, and you're saying the one we usually use is um, uh, fit transform. Fit transform. Use okay. fit and then transform, or you can combine to use fit transform. Okay, this yeah. is more optimized. Okay, let's see. This one is Get parameters. Good stuff. Words. So. You have removed stop words already, right? Uh, yeah. So, let's see. Get feature names. Uh, I mean, get parameters. I mean, there's a lot of function. I mean, there's a few functions here, right? But I don't see. I don't see a lot of. Okay. Well, transform. What is that? That's a part of fit transform, anyways, right? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I mean, the only thing I see here immediately. We can have like get feature names, get params. Uh, these are also. Uh, yeah. Basically, like these seem to be the only interesting ones here to me. Yeah. Um. So. Maybe, but also at the same time, like, if you don't have, like, whatever you do, make sure you have, you, you want to make sure you have an example for, right? Um, because people aren't going to use it unless it has an example, right? Um, so if you, if you, if you want to do the, the, the legwork to make an example, that's great, but, you know, otherwise, um, you know, maintain the, maintain focus on, on, what, well, I mean, this is what you're working on, right? But, you know, if if you see this as, as something that you can effectively create examples for each one of these, then yes. If you don't think you can effectively create an example for it, that makes sense, then then don't worry about it, right? Okay. Uh, uh, one more thing. Uh, can you scroll up? Oh, uh, at, at the top. Yeah. So, uh, if you see, if you see the signature here, uh, we have uh, this. Uh, sorry, pro preprocessors. Yeah, mm -hmm. preprocessors and tokenizer. Right. Mm -hmm. So these are basically functions that we can write and pass. So, mm -hmm. uh, what uh, should we do about these? Because okay. Uh, yeah. Obviously, we can't have people passing in random functions. Um, yeah. Convert all characters. So, preprocessor and tokenizer. So. Override the preprocessing string transformation stage while preserving the tokenizing and engrams generation steps. Only applies if analyzer is not callable. Tokenizer. Override the string tokenization step while preserving the preprocessing and engrams generation steps. Only applies if analyzer equals word. Okay. So they have a default tokenizer inside them, but if we want to override, we can have our own tokenizer and this will tokenize this mm -hmm. So we can write in any other uh, library, like using Spacey, I can write a tokenizer, then I can pass it here. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I'm with that. My my immediate my immediate reaction to this is basically, if you want to use either of these, you need to be running your data flow from a Python file. Um, and like Yash talked about last time, we have examples of doing things from the command line. It would be good to have examples of doing things from Python files. And this seems like sort of an ideal, ideal, uh, ideal example for you know 
how if if you were to write if you were to write one of the data flows in your example, you should show how to do this in Python too, right? More than just with the data flow create command and the command line stuff. And when you do that, you can maybe include a you know you can create an input where the value equals um, you know some whatever your preprocessing function is. Does that make sense? Mm, okay. So but if you are using, if, but if we are uh, using from command line, then we need to have these functions defined in our DFFML, right? Because uh, yeah, I mean, so it it's it's yeah, I mean, you you yeah, if you're going from the command line, right, then you end up with a situation where you need you need plugins, right? Um, yeah. I mean, I guess what we could do. What we could do is the so the the, the problem is that um, the problem is that 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 a large part of the philosophy is that we need to separate the the code, separate the the interface from the from the implementation, right? Because um, this is what's going to allow us to to do things like you know have these orchestrators that call the operations like across languages right um so um but i mean this it works all fine and well when you're in python um but uh let's see um preprocessor callable how would you do this okay it's just going to be i mean it's just going to call the function could you wrap the function could probably wrap the functions um, yeah, I mean, we could do the thing where we have like the entry point style load path and basically declare a definition as accepting something, right? Because we have, we have various, we have like the lock parameter on a definition, um, we've got the primitive, um, we can have like a primitive that is callable or something and then if it's callable you can pass in a function um, that 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 could be that could be what we do here um, and and then in that case if it sees that the if you see if it sees that so for example you you have okay so let me just sort of pop it up and show you so um, df types class put Right, so here we look where we look at like the spec and stuff, right? Um, or yeah, so this is when we create an input object, right? We do things like do spec validation, right? Um, well, we could do something here where we say, um, you know, load callable if uh, string, um, and we could say, you know, like if. Uh, Definition dot primitive uh. oh. Right, we could do this, where basically then if you have something like you know your um, and then then the file would be you know whatever, right? Does this make sense? We could do this. Uh, yeah. Um, in which case then you would just pass the path to the, you know, the path to the function that you wanted, right? Now, um, yeah, uh, but, uh, this will be right, uh, like from the security perspective, as you are telling to section that people can insert random code here. Yes. Right. So the, the risk here is that then somebody says OS.system and now they're passing, you know, whatever they want to a shell. Yeah. Um, so this is why, 
this is why this is discouraged. Um, so, um, should we not use this for now? And uh, once we have something uh, better, maybe I will check if 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 there is some work around. If we can do the same stuff using something different. Yeah, I mean, I I think your 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 other option here, right, is um, is that uh, let's see. Um, I mean. The, the thing is that that yeah I mean I don't I don't think I don't think there's I don't think there's a there's a way where we end up up uh, up winning against uh, you know the possible security implications of this um, basically if you can take a look at the there's some discussion about the YAML library and their safe load function um, and that sort of tells you why I'm iffy about this um, because basically they said that's the YAML spec, and everybody said, "Well, this is not good." Um, and so, yeah, this is not quite the same thing, um, but we could definitely be in a very similar position quite easily. Um, and so I'll just, I'll just, if you go to the libyaml Python website, it'll be front center, so you can read about that if you want to. Um, but for now, I mean, this is this is exactly why we we need to make the entry points. The entry point loadable plugins for the for the config objects, right? We can do the same thing, and we can make them for you know whatever data type this is. Um, but but the thing is, then then is it going to be compatible cross, cross like when when these things are distributed? Um, right. So for example, with Agen's work, he's we're going to be it'll be, you'll run the main data flow on on one node. And then on maybe another workstation, you're running, um, you know, some of these operations, and then it, it's not going to serialize um, the function over the network. Um, so, so in that case, it it won't work then, right? So, um, you'd need to have, you know, whatever that you you could you could do the entry point thing so long as you know that entry point is installed and registered on the other system. Then you know, on if if you you're sending this to a remote node, and the remote mo node is what's actually running the operation, when it gets you know maybe it gets a the, the definition primitive is like you know entry point or whatever, it instantiates it over there, and it says okay, I've got this thing installed, great, like now I can go load the function and I'll pass that function. Um, that that would work okay, right? Um, okay. But at this point. Um, yeah. I, uh, uh, how, how, how custom are these tokenizers and preprocessors? Yeah, that's like, a good question. Do you write everything in them? Like, whatever you want? Uh, no, so, 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 like, you can, uh, you may have some words that you want to remove. Uh, you, you don't, you don't want to tokenize them, basically. So, maybe there is a company name and you have a company name that's abbreviation and you don't want to split it, things like this. So, I mean, you can do anything inside it. Tokenization can be anything. It, the way you want to break up the text in any way you want. You have you can use use your own regex expression inside it, and I mean there is a lot of things that can be done. Could we do this? There is a lot of optimization. I mean, could we do this before we hit this operation, right? Like, could we do this as a separate operation? Uh, no, because this is something it does internally. It does internally. I mean, it uses. Yeah. Uh, can can we pass uh, one operation as an argument to a different operation? See, we that's going to get us in trouble with the distributed orchestrator as well, I think. Um, but we can okay. let me think. Let's think about that. So, one, once again, both both things would have to be installed on the same the same system, um, and then. You would have to be. You'd have to know whether it's an async operation or not. Um, and and let's see. You'd basically be passing the run method. Um, you'd be passing the run method. Uh, I mean, let's see. 
it could be done, I think. Um, let's see. Yeah, I guess if you fix a particular definition saying that this would be an operation, we can do. Yeah, my concern. Yeah, did you do you end up with the case where now you have a an, an, you you now you have so so currently basically everything you could you could have a different every operation could be running on a different computer. Right, and all of the data could be is just sent between everything, right? Like you can you can network send everything over the network between all these operations. Um, when we start passing around callables, then um, you either have to serialize the implementations and all the libraries that it's using and everything, um, or you have to have them installed on the same machine, or you have to somehow proxy the um, you have to essentially proxy the input data and the output data right and so if say say for example so the easiest way to do this would basically be pass some sort of a, an, a wrapper alias thing which basically when someone calls the function it says hey I need to call this operation go find out where does this operation actually exist, call this operation, and then return the result, right? And that operation may exist on another machine still, right? The problem is um, we're, we're likely mixing async and, and synchronous code at this point, and then you, you end up blocking. Um, so that's not good, because um, we can never, we can, we never want to block. Um, but let's see. Yeah, it's an internal thing. I mean, you may just end up with a case where, yeah, you got to just have this stuff installed on the same machine. In which case, yeah, I mean. Like, if we see a particular definition of type A callable, like we can just pass the inputs back to the orchestrator and maybe I'll like call back, so then that finish comes back here. But the thing is, you, the thing is, you're 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 mixing async and non-async code in yeah, this case, yes, yes. Yeah. right? And that's going to be the issue here. Um, um, let's see. How do we do that? Uh, you call it. You end, you'd end up in another thread, which is going to kill your performance. Um, this. Yeah, I mean, so here's what I think. I think that you can, why don't, why don't you create this callable, I think I think you should only support it from Python, is what I think at this point. Because then, okay. yeah, because basically if you, if you just say, like, if you provide this, if, if we have some kind of definition, you know, Basically, we'll we'll look at we'll we'll we we and we this is something we need to do where we need to basically do a uh, where do we have it we've got well, it's not in here oh yeah stage so stage is an enum we need another enum for um for primitive um um and we need it to be like you know a string a string etc. Right, and so we need one that this is. I mean, you don't have to do this now, but eventually we should do something like this. Um, and and but for now, we'll just check if you put the primitives as, as callable um, when we go to do the distributed orchestrator thing. If you get an input um, that says callable, basically you just throw up an error and say no right like i'm not going to do callables um you're not, i'm not passing around your callables right um yeah. you can do not implemented error um and then from from the perspective of 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 the uh the command line loader um you would also basically if you go to run well, I mean, you don't necessarily know that you're loading from the command line. Um, 
you're just not going to, I mean, when you instantiate an input, well, this would just be like an input validation thing, I guess. Like if we would add, we'd add, this is what we would do. We would just want to do something. I think it would just be here, right? Just like we did the spec validation. We'd say if primitive equals callable and not uh, inspect dot, where was that collections ABC callable thing? Yeah, we just used that for your thing, Sakshom. Um, where did it go? Yeah, collection JBC callable in data. Here is instance callable. Yeah, so basically, Ray is not implemented. Or like, you know, value error or something. So we'll, we'll have to add this, right? Um, because basically, this should, this should, this should be enough to sort of, um, you know, uh, catch anything that's not coming from Python, right? Um, and then I guess in the orchestrator, we'll probably also want to also want to say, I mean, the orchestrator is just going to bail when it tries to serialize things. Um, the distributed orchestrator, I mean, it's just it's not going to be able to serialize that callable. Um, so uh, to whatever protocol Nats is using, because uh, I, I suspect it was JSON, right? That we're dumping and loading. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so it's just gonna bail. So in this case, um, this this would be what you you would want to do here, I guess, in case someone tries to pass in like an entry point load style path, just to let them know that no, we're not doing that. Um, but yeah, I think I think the the answer is that that we're trending towards what Yash was talking about last week, which is we're gonna have some Python examples too, um, which is a good thing. Um, but yeah, I I think and I think most people will likely just. I mean, most people are likely running, you know, just their thing on their machine and and just want to do some quick and dirty stuff, right? So it'll it'll probably be fine. Okay. All right. So. Yeah. Then I will just do this for Python. Okay. We'll make Python example. We show how to pass a stone prepose. Uh, function. All right, and then you're looking for good examples related to NLP. Um, what what types of things did, were you were you tentatively thinking about? Uh, basically anything. I want to uh, show the operations and then the models. Okay. Uh, the use of the models. I mean, this looks obviously like a uh, a good one. Um, I mean, they're a bunch of NLP stuff. I don't know. I don't know if this if this seems like something. Does this seem like something where you might be able to just you know run some NLP models on it and show some stuff? Yeah, I'd like to see. Yeah, I'd have to see because I'd have to look. see if all these models are there in the FML or not. Yeah. Yes, I would check this one. Um, other than that, I mean, like you've got the summarizing. What what do you what do you have right now? I remember you have the summarizing, the, the you have the question answering we, one, and we don't have summarization. Yeah, I meant I meant question. Yeah, we can add that. Yeah. I meant uh, I, I meant. Uh, yeah, we do. Have yeah. Okay. So so we what what add, we have question answering. We have question answering. We have. N E R. N E R. And what was it? Is, that's and the, then we have classification. Okay. Let's see. Um, let's see. I mean, my immediate thought would be you could you could 
do the question answering and combine it with the classification somehow, right? Somebody asks a question and you're going to give them, right? So maybe you have, you have a set, right? That's the one where you have, this is why I meant to say you have a short, some, like you have a short paragraph, right? Or something. And then you a ask the question, it gives the answer yeah. based on this short paragraph, right? Yeah. And then yeah. you yeah. maybe figure out like you you chain that using data flow with the with the sentiment analysis to see right i, I mean this is trivial and, and doesn't really mean anything but it shows how you can chain them together um right you can sort of gauge you, you do something where you say okay what's what's the answer so somebody asks a question about something and you figure out what the answer is and then you figure out the sentiment of the answer and uh, like, yeah, I guess that, I mean that's basically it, right? So you could you can you append a little frowny face at the end if it's sad, and you append a happy face at the end if it's if it's a happy answer, right? Yeah, okay. I don't know. That's yeah. just just an idea. Anybody else have any ideas? Do we have a classification example, or are we looking for one? Uh, no, like. Uh... I'm not looking for any particular category. I'm just looking for anything that involves operation and model. It can be anything. And it has to be a bit. We have any examples right now? Or... No. I thought you had an example here. Um, or wait, yeah, classifier. I mean, you have this example, right? Yeah, this, this kind of example is true, yeah. Yeah. But we want basically your goal here is to do operations and models, models. together. Yeah. Yeah. Which yeah. is why I was suggesting that. I mean, it's trivial, but it does combine the two. There might be something more interesting, though, right? Um, let's see. What is the any the any our tagger? A basic example is spam classifier. Oh yeah. Uh, sorry. The spam classifier, like it's a very okay, basic okay. example. Spam, like, spam and ham. <laughs> yeah, I can do that. Yeah, that's a good. That's a good idea. Yeah, you could do. I mean, is sentiment will this will the will the sentiment classifier help you do spam or not spam? Uh, no, not exactly. Uh, this will uh, this, uh, this can involve the cycle learn also. Okay. I mean, we can do using cycle learn too. Uh, this will not actually involve sentiment analysis part, but we can use the classification one. I mean, okay. the classification model basically we are using for sentiment only. So we have classification, we can use that. Okay, but that's what that's sentiment. what I meant. Yeah, that's what I was trying to get at. Is it is it classification of just sentiment or can it yeah. be reused? Okay, great. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's a that's a good that's a good example then there. So let's write these both down so you have them. And so um, uh, spam class. Um, yeah. Could combine. Yeah, I like that spam classification is a good one. Um, classic. Good example. Uh, with. All right. Um, all right. Cool. So I'll get on these reviews, and then um, is anybody have anything else they wanted to talk about today? I I had a very interesting suggestion for NLP. Like yeah. I, I saw this library, terminal library that was like it's named for. Sorry for the. <laughs> word, oh like, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. So what it does is it completes the wrong terminal statement you mm -hmm. use. So if we could use that as an example for this. I don't know if I'll have to see if there's a yeah, data set. Yeah, it's the one you saw. I you like if you put the wrong command there. Yeah, what is this? Yeah, the fuck. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, I used to use this. Um, let's see. So your the idea is what? So basically, you just like uh, we uh, we can just write the wrong command and just pass it in the model and let's see what prediction comes out of it. Mm -hmm. For the correct command. Okay. How we would use it? Like we can 
I don't know how to deploy models using DFFML. So yeah, let's see. But but this this is something like we could train. Like we can inst we can type pip install and write the wrong spelling of install and then see if it works or not. Yeah. Uh. Okay, if you want to do something like this, then uh, have anyone uh, check this GPT three? Yeah, that's what I was pulling up here. <laughs> Uh, let's see, where is their page? This is really cool. Um, let's yeah, see. Yeah, I mean, like, this is uh, very close to what uh, AI. So this can do a lot of things. If you want something uh, to integrate like this, then uh, maybe this is also a good thing. Well, yeah, if you can figure out how to do this, that'd be awesome. Um, if you, have you... I mean, I looked. I looked, and it looks like they have. They basically said that they were doing GPT two. Um, I can't remember what they said. Maybe there was like another layer involved or something. I can't remember. It was like a small tweak on top of GPT two. So, I mean, if you want to do that, that that's that's awesome. They had, and I'll I'll post the demo here. Where did it go? They have everything. Like they can generate code. They can generate text. They can oh yeah. Anything. Yeah, they they. <laughs> They've done a number on this thing. Um, AI. Where is their damn website? Yeah, here. So this. Um, where was it? Blog. Where did it go? Damn it. GPT-3. I just was on it the other day. Because I want to show you guys this demo. Well, I'll put the link in here. But, ah, damn it. But basically, did yeah, they... What? Okay. Yeah. Did you see its demo where it was generating the app using the description? Yeah, I've seen and that. Just, yeah, that, that was just super cool. This. This thing. Check this thing out. Um... Basically, they say, what is it? It's a good command line. So this is their. Um, they have this Da Vinci model, or Div, yeah, Da Vinci model, and they've got some examples, right? But the thing is, I mean, this is a bit deceptive because they've trained this thing on millions and millions and millions of examples, right? So it doesn't actually just take this many examples, is my understanding. It takes lots. Um, yeah. but yeah, let's see. Come on. Yeah, it's it's something around three forty billion tokens or something like that. Yeah, billion. Yeah, not million. Billion. Yeah. So, because look at this. Yeah, and it comes up with the correct commands. Pretty crazy. Um, but yeah. So that I'll just leave this here for you guys to to check out. Um, let's see. Um, but yeah, that, I mean, I like that. I, I'm not, sh I'm not sure if it could do, yeah, if we could do type pip. Uh, and let's see if we can correct spelling. Right. That's the, I mean, I like, I like this example. Um, I'm, I think that's, you you might have a, you might have trouble with the data set there too, though. Um, so yeah, I think. Spam spam classification maybe your 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 well I guess a bunch of misspelled words actually would be pretty easy to fix too um, because you could basically just take a bunch of things that are spelled correctly and then jumble some of the letters in them um, but yeah all right um, do you have some stuff to think about there then or no uh, it's okay I will check it out and uh, let you know cool yeah should you have any other thoughts on this. Okay. Cool. All right. Well, thanks, everyone. And uh, I'll talk to you guys next week. Have a good weekend. Bye. Bye. Bye.